involves White Sox sending Reese McGuire and a player to be named later or cash considerations to uh, the uh, Boston Red Sox in exchange for left-handed reliever Jake Dykeman here. Um, interesting sort of deal, I thought, because obviously we knew that the left-handed bullpen spot was an absolute need, just given Bummer's timeline with Tanner Banks being the only one there, extremely you know shielded uh, in his usage there. But Dykeman has, I think it's stuff that can play, However, the command uh, can be an issue with him. Sean. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna fit right in with this. Uh, he's gonna fit right in with this bullpen because very rarely do they come in and throw strikes. So I mean, from a command standpoint, let's go. Welcome to the White Sox, baby. Um, but but it's a left-handed arm. I I did some research on him. Like, okay, great. It's not some earth-shattering move. I don't think we were expecting anything earth-shattering. Um, at this trade deadline. So uh, obviously we want to see a little, we need more, <laughs> but you, you can only do so much with what you have. And the unfortunate thing is the white Sox farm system outside of like two prospects are, it's not that good. Um, but Reese McGuire, that was a move that was going to have to be made. Um, and, and shout out Zubby Zavala, who went, he earned a spot. If there's someone who's like came out and earned, earned some shit this year it's been zebby and and it's it's good to see he's a good story i i enjoy watching him catch i enjoy watching him hit dude hustles um but yeah i mean this this move's not earth shattering it's something that needed to be done we needed a left-handed arm out of the bullpen and welcome to the shit show yeah Right, right. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I wonder if uh, there can be some turnaround because uh, there were stretches, too. And obviously, I know the recent one is kind of what gets highlighted when you talk about Dykeman uh, with some of the issues in July. But however, uh, before that, there were some numbers that uh, say that he has some strikeout shit, essentially, is what I'm getting at there. So yeah. uh, we'll just be interesting to see um, how he fares uh, when he puts on the black and white. So change, change the color of his socks there, Sean. Um as I look at that from the Reese McGuire standpoint, I agree wholeheartedly uh, with, with Sebi earning his spot and shit. Dude, Sebi is the number one catcher on this team right now. I'm sorry. I'm usually, uh, I have been a big Yaz fan. I was really hoping. I think he was going to be an X factor for the second half. Right now, uh, that's not the case. He <laughs> offered some hope in his rehab assignment, uh, starting to drive the ball a little bit. And then when he came back, it was okay. He's still getting his feet wet here, but he was hitting singles, right? He was bringing that <laughs> some runs. And then now you go and have a night like tonight, and he looks terrible. So, Sebi Zavala is your number one catcher right now. Yeah, not not as funny. I was getting, I was about to text you um, after his last at bat tonight, and I was just about to say, I can't take your boy anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm, about, Dude, yeah. I'm about yazzed out, man. I'm Dude, about yazzed out. It, it sucks because you kind of like thought that that single stretch might have been like the start of like a like I yeah. said, you know, getting it back into it, and it's like okay, at least he was doing something to help. Line drive game. here, line drive. I mean, right, he's it's right. to the point where he's coming to the dish, and you're going, well, it's, it's an out. Yeah, like I, I'm tired of the the little ground ball or the pop up because it's all it is. It's it's he'll get he'll get one base hit here in the next couple games and we'll think, Oh, is it, is that it? Is that right. the at bat? Right. And it's, yeah. so it's, it's, it's this team, man, lack of consistency with that, yeah, well, with everything. Right.